Search and rescue operation is still underway at Grand Canyon National Park to find Arizona woman who went missing after she was swept into a creek during a flash flood, the woman's sister said on social media Saturday. The woman went missing two days ago after she went hiking in Havasu Creek, about a half mile 800 meters from where it meets up with the Colorado River. The flash flood struck the area Thursday in the early afternoon. Other hikers made it to the village, about 3.2 kilometers from the campground, where they awaited helicopter rides. I did. Holy shit. I sure did. Wow. Wow. That was crazy. That, you know what? That might have been the mist that John Snake would be doing out up there too. You know, see how the mist came off that then when it did that? Wow. Whole fucking ledge into the river. Crazy. The full-scale war in Ukraine continues and Russian occupiers have captured at least five intact YPR-765 infantry fighting vehicles which were provided to Kiev by the Netherlands. This information was shared by Forbes. The national information portal TISK reported on Telegram on Friday evening, August the 23rd, that during the assault in Donetsk Oblast, the opponents used a captured YPR-765 infantry fighting vehicle as an armored personnel carrier. According to the publication, the enemy assault was repelled by Ukrainian reconnaissance soldiers and the invaders suffered losses. Nip showed a photo showing an infantry fighting vehicle with two destroyed enemies lying near it. Besides being an historical oddity with a storied past, the Russian-operated YPR-765 is yet another data point in one of the most important trends as Russia's wider war on Ukraine grinds into its third year. The Russians are running out of armored vehicles. It's not for no reason that they had to repurpose a captured Dutch vehicle from the late 1970s. The Russian military went to war in Ukraine in early 2022 with around 11,000 infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers, the main vehicles for transporting infantry into battle and supporting them with gunfire. On the drone-infested artillery-peppered battlefields in Ukraine, IFVs and APCs are arguably more important than tanks. Which is why, earlier in the wider war, Carnegie Endowment analyst Michael Kaufman warned that the main Russian shortfall in armored vehicles is not in tanks, but in IFVs. That shortfall has gotten worse and worse as the war has ground on. In 29 months, the Russians have lost, destroyed, damaged, abandoned or captured no fewer than 6,500 IFVs and APCs. To make good the losses and equip new units, Russian industry has produced maybe a couple of thousand new vehicles and also retrieved from long-term storage as many as 7,000 old vehicles. Residents of the Kursk region are faced with the situation that millions of Ukrainians found themselves in at the beginning of the full-scale invasion. They became internally displaced persons and what's more, they saw that the authorities don't care about their problems. They have essentially been forgotten. But this will not lead to protests in the Russian Federation, says Russian opposition politician and former State Duma deputy Igor Yakovenko. The analyst said that many people still harbor myths about Russia. One of them is that Russians support the war and Putin. One simple thing must be firmly understood. In a totalitarian country, which modern Russia is, there is not and cannot be any sociology. In fact, over the course of several centuries of the existence of this state, which traces its origins back 
to the Moscow Principality, the population has never been a people. Never. There has never been a single moment when the population changed power at elections. Yakovenko noted, the population of Russia has never been a subject. It has been calm about any power as such. Stalin means Stalin. Khrushchev means Khrushchev. Gorbachev is also not bad. Yeltsin is good. When Prigozhin came to Rostov and then went to Moscow, it was fine. He was applauded. Ukraine came. Also good. So we will live under the Ukrainians, he added. For this reason, there is no need to expect any protest in the Russian Federation, although there is and will be discontent in society, of course. But Putin has an internal army which is larger in number than the army that is currently fighting in Ukraine, and any protest will be destroyed more brutally than it was in Tiananmen Square in China, the expert said. Kursk region residents who spoke to the Moscow Times expressed frustration with what they see as government inaction and fears about the war now at their doorstep. People are of no concern to anyone. Anna, a 28-year-old resident of the Kursk region, told the Moscow Times, criticizing the Kremlin's response to the assault. For Russia, we are just a piece of the map. For Ukrainians, we are enemies supporting Putin's regime. Everyone here is on their own, she said. Kursk residents who spoke to the Moscow Times said that officials are either unresponsive or ineffective in their efforts, yet refrained from blaming Putin directly. Svetlana, 32, said that while locals blame Kyiv for the attack, they also questioned the competence of the Russian armed forces. How could they, Russia, have missed the build-up of such a large number of Ukrainian troops at the border? Svetlana told the Moscow Times, adding that locals do not directly blame the authorities for abandoning them.